Well, let's talk about setting this radio up. Um, how exactly to do that? So we know noise light discipline, noise and light discipline is a thing, and something that we need to observe uh, at all times, regardless of what role you might be uh, utilizing your radio in. The first one is, of course, menu option number 14. What is this? This is the voice prompts. All right, so you got three options there. You have Chinese, you got English. You know, I kind of kind of make the joke is, you know, the, the English voice is kind of the, the, the Chinese version of Siri or whatever <laughs> in the radio. You go on and cut that off. Um, we don't need that. Let's cut that off. All right, the way that you go into menus in here, uh, it's literally the same across any of your radios pulled out. You know, I know a lot of you have a UV5R series, so it's going to look like this. This is one of the, uh, the DFF8HPs, so this is putting out 8 watts, uh, and we'll get this in brush bigger store. But anyway, uh, how to configure the menu options themselves. Hit menu. Scroll up, scroll down, you get to the one you're looking for, hit menu again, scroll up, scroll down, you're gonna go through the options themselves, hit menu again to save it, hit exit, you're done. Yep. It's that simple, very, very simple to operate, it's not anything like, you know, a Yesu where you gotta dig through 85 <laughs> different button presses to get to what you're looking for and then you still might not find it. It's like programming an old school VCR. Yep. I know you're probably too young for that. But uh, anyway, it, it, yeah, just an aside. Menu options 29, 30, and 31. These are gonna be your backlights. I cut these off. I don't need them if I'm operating this radio at night. Generally, I'm gonna have night vision on. So if I've got my nods on my head, and I'm rocking a set of PBS 31s then I'm able to read the screen at night, okay? So you can go on and cut those off to uh, 29, 30, and 31 is the transmission backlight, the receiving backlight. So if you're receiving, you're gonna get it, get some uh, color options in there, blue, orange, purple, so on and so forth. You can cut all of that off, right? You don't need that on, okay? So that leaves us with the others in the menu. Of course, when you first hit that menu button, you pull this thing out of the box, try to go zero to hero. Menu number zero is going to be your squelch setting. What is squelch? Squelch is a filter that is filtering out all that unwanted static. All right, so it's basically the sound threshold of when this radio receives a certain strong signal, it's gonna activate the microphone or uh, the speaker rather, and you're gonna hear it, right? So if it gets something that's below that noise floor, that noise threshold, then you're not gonna hear it. I always set that squelch setting to three. Generally, you can go into some software programs like Chirp, for example, and you can kind of monkey with those settings. I don't recommend doing that. Uh, leave it at three and kind of forget it. The early Baofeng UV5Rs had a bad problem with squelch and that led to kind of some, some problems with mm -hmm. reputation early on. Newer iterations have far superior filtering to that, especially uh, this UV1 or the uh, AR152 rather. This is a much, much better radio miles, better than, than a lot of the cheaper versions that are out there. Uh, next. Menu number two, this is gonna be your transmission power. All right, there are three different settings on these and some of your higher powered models. You're gonna have the one watt setting on low, generally four power, or uh, four watts on the mid power setting, and then eight or 10 watts on the high power setting. So what are the different use cases for these three? When would you wanna go low versus going high? So in a tactical environment, I'm always gonna go very low power, uh, the lowest power possible. And you'll notice this antenna on here, this uh, stubby rubber antenna, because I'm creating loss. You know, one of the, the questions that people will often send over to me is uh, with regard to radio is, is how much range is that thing gonna get? When I'm doing tactical 
when I'm putting things. I want my transmission to go as short as possible. We're talking inner team communications, which is what tactical combo is. You're not transmitting more than maybe 2,000 meters, we'll say a mile, right, mm -hmm. at the most. And there's a lot of reasons that you don't want it to go that far. Um, you know, I, I'm only trying to, to, let's say I'm part of an assault element and I'm coordinating to support my fire, um, my supporting elements, whatever. You, you know, real world on a patrol, you're not that far apart. So you want to keep your electronic footprint relatively small in your working environment rather than blasting out a bunch of energy all over elsewhere. Now, talking about a, a scenario like Hurricane Helene, you know, which is in the back of everybody's minds, you need to bump that power up because the goal there was the complete opposite. As I defined in Will's Guide to Battle Tank Radio, that falls squarely in the sustainment communications category where range and distance, um, range in terms of you know how can I transmit and then in physical distance, how far my transmission yeah. is going. That's all critically important at that point. So, you know, it, it's, it's, that's something to think about as different considerations. We talk about aftermarket antennas, you know, something like this uh, flexible gooseneck antenna or something like that comes into play, right? Um, moving down the list here. So we've got our transmission power. Let's talk about Vox, number four, uh, menu option number four. Vox or voice activated operation which is what this is. If the microphone detects sound, it's going to begin transmitting. Vox is something you want to use for hands-free operation. What I use it for in the digital operations chapter of the Gorilla's Guide to the Balfang is configuring digital data bursts with a tablet in conjunction with a tablet. So if you're running Crypto, because yep, absolutely can, and we've got a video that's going to be coming up on exactly how to do that, how you do that, and how you accomplish that goal. Um, and you absolutely should be from a ComSec standpoint. ComSec's always critically important. But uh, if if you're doing that with this radio, and that is, I think, the best case use for this radio is configuring it to be a data terminal, that is a consideration. So you need to have that box setting to one. Otherwise, you need to have that cut off because what it leads to is hot mics mm -hmm. where, you know, and we see it every scout course, we see it every recce course, guys are running comms in their teams and they have combo issues. I saw it many, many times overseas where, you know, we're, we're running uh, CASI headsets and Peltors and, you know, what have you, contacts and all that stuff. And uh, dudes are, are hot mic and left and right and stepping all over each other. And it, it just turns into a mess, right? Just keep that thing cut off. All right, next on the list, menu number seven, transmit and dual receive or TDR. This is the one that I strongly recommend that you have cut on. What this is going to do for you is it allows you to monitor two frequencies simultaneously. So you have your top one and your bottom one. You can transmit on one frequency and receive on another. It's a very simple ComSec technique that I think will pay off quite well for a lot of people. Basically, uh, when you think about cross-band repeating, quote unquote, this is a similar in concept operation. It's not the same thing. Don't take words out of my mouth here. It's not the same thing, but it's close. Uh, the logic is the same. You're transmitting on one frequency, receiving on another. Right, so you could have one set the VHF, the other set the UHF, and bam, you know, the people you're talking to transmitting on a whole other frequency range, you're hearing both of those. Anybody's trying to monitor you, they might run into a problem. All right, they might hear only half the conversation. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on their level of sophistication. That's a whole other conversation. All right. Menu 10 through 13, so 10, 12, and 13, CTCSS and DCS. So what is this? All right, continuous tone coded squelch system, or CTCSS, is uh, better known as those annoying little privacy tones that you know, you'll see your little Motorola's or unit and handhelds or whatever they call them, privacy tones. Mm -hmm. That's not what they are. 
right, what they actually are is, is you're transmitting a subaudible tone from one radio to another. And other radio is only going to wake up and mm. listen to what the other one is saying if it is receiving that. Right. So having a receiving CTCSS or a DCS, which is a digital coded squelch, similar in operation, uh, but slightly different. Having those subaudible tones can create a, yet another level of ComSec through jam resistance. But it is not, I say again, it is not going to prevent uh, anybody from eavesdropping on you. So calling it a privacy tone, I, I always thought was really funny. Uh, the more I learned about Camo stuff and Signet and all that, it was, you know, no, nope, that's not what it's doing for you. <laughs> okay. But this also is a very common error vector that I've seen. People will cut those on inadvertently, uh, monkeying around in the settings. And look, the menus on this are just like anything else. If you go in there and you start monkeying around with something and changing settings and you don't know what they are, that's just like opening the hood of your car and starting to take bolts out of everywhere and you don't know what they are. How do you think that's going to work out? Not very well, right? And then you, you, know, you hand it off to somebody who's, oh, he's a designated combo guy. He'll fix it. No, don't be a dummy, okay? Stop doing that. If you make a change, write something down, or better yet, reference the book. It'll help you out, all right? Going down the list here, menu number one, frequency step. The default setting on these is 25 kilohertz, all right? So you'll notice on your screen, everything's measured in megahertz, all right? Kilohertz is a little smaller because everything is in metrics when it comes to this, right? It's a little bit smaller, a lot of it smaller. All right, 25 kilohertz is a uh, fairly wide bandwidth, and that is usually the standard for your license-free transmissions are gonna be that wide. You can cut that down. Uh, narrow bandwidth is down to 6.25 kilohertz. You might wanna cut that down. The tune step really only matters if you're trying to use this as a scanner, which we kind of talked about in our overview yep. of SIGIN equipment video. You can go back and check that out. Uh, 25 kilohertz is a good setting to have if you're trying to listen to, uh, you're trying to get it to scan quickly, mm -hmm. basically, or more quickly than it normally would. All right, let's talk about menu number nine, the timeout timer. You want to have this set to 60 seconds unless you are sending a very long digital message, which does happen. All right, in advanced RTO, you start sending some very uh, long digital traffic, sometimes that can go over 60 seconds. Rarely, rarely it does, but it might. What you wanna do is set this, keep it at 60 seconds, why? Because let's say going back to uh, menu number four box, and so let's say we talked about uh, hot miking. You want to keep that hot mic mitigated as much as possible. So it, what it does is it allows this radio to transmit a maximum of 60 seconds before it shuts it off mm -hmm. manually and says, you're not transmitting anymore until you unkey the mic and rekey the mic. Um, so that's using, an important set. Sorry. So if you're using Vox and you run for that full 60 and it you know, shuts you off, mm -hmm. how soon until that Vox reactivates itself you got to unkey the mic and rekey the mic. Okay. That's how it works. So it, you, you won't just get to continuously transmit. Um, that's important for jam resistance as well because in my experience, most of the time that people have said, you know, oh, we're being jammed. Now, yeah, you're, you're doing it to yourself because you don't have any combo discipline. Oh, mm -hmm. it's true. Seen it more than once. And I'm sure somebody will let me know down below that, you know, how you don't really know what I'm talking about, right? It's cool. I get it. All right, uh, going down the list here, menu number eight, the Roger Beep. Probably the most annoying doggone function on this radio. Make sure you cut that off. You get laser eyes from me if I hear that. <laughs> It's the most annoying thing in the world. You do not need a Roger Beep on a radio. I don't even know why they include it in there. It's ridiculous. It's like they include the flashlight. Just an extra function. Yeah. That's why I popped the radio up in a desolder. 
no more flashlight. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Last and certainly not least, if you spent any amount of time as a trigger puller in uniform, and I do not mean LARPing on the, the uh, airsoft field, you'll know about the Z function on every radio. Boy, top secret technology. Zing that radio out. And what that means is, is you're zeroizing the radio. It was always uh, during the GWAT, it was always the last thing you wanted to hear. You know, you, as soon as you uh, fill that radio to crypto in there, your comp sec, your comp sec, now all of a sudden, beep, you're like, <laughs> everything got dumped. It does a data dump on the memory and does a factory reset. The original purpose behind the zeroizing function on military radios is in case you were getting overrun, uh, compromised, whatever it might be, you want to zero that out so an adversary can't get anything out of that radio. Well, these radios have that function as well, and it's menu option number 40. That is the factory reset. Now keep in mind, when you do the factory reset, there are some reasons you would want to do it. Maybe if some settings get off, this is a software-defined radio. Some things get off, maybe a little out of whack in there. It's just like your computer. You do a factory reset on it every so often, and then maybe it kind of sort of might work a little bit better, right? Radio does the same thing. It's going to dump everything out of the memory, all those things that you shouldn't have programmed in there, but did, you know, all the all, all those fun people and super secret channels you're going to talk to you. Right? All my local ham repeaters, that's all going to get dumped out of there and then your radio is going to start speaking Chinese to you. Don't worry, it's not going to blow up. <laughs> it's a fun joke, right? Oh, is, that, is my radio going to blow up? No, it's not. It's, believe me, the Chinese are not putting PET in in these radios, okay? And if they were, I'm pretty sure somebody would have known about it before now. <laughs> anyway, that zeroizing function is something to pay attention to. Yeah. Just saying. Gorilla's Guide to the Baofeng Radio was written specifically with the Warfighter in mind. And if you have to use this in unconventional places where, you know, a lot of, I've talked to a lot of friends who work in other continents. And a lot of times, you know, doing security contracting gigs, PSDs, and what have you, a lot of the equipment that is provided for them leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, you know, out at Mountain Readiness this past weekend, there was a fairly well-known security contractor who was there. We had a mm -hmm. long conversation about that in a country that a lot of people would recognize the name of. He's getting ready to take another trip there. And we were having a long conversation about their communications equipment or the lack thereof and building that infrastructure. Uh, so these are things to think about. Again, you know, creating communications where there otherwise would be none for a litany of purposes ranging from uh, your own preparedness and survival, tactical communications, and clandestine communications, all contained in the book. Hey, if you got anything out of this, appreciate you. Like and subscribe. Leave comments, complaints, what have you down below. Rock on. Get after it. Train hard. Rushbeater.store. We'll talk to you soon. It's called the Gorilla's Guide to the Balfang Radio, you effing moron. What did you think it was written for? That simple, you know. Sorry, it's not a book about ham radio. Can you use some of the stuff? Sure.